the JAMA Network. I'm Delane Kitzman, Professor of Internal Medicine in the Departments of Cardiovascular Medicine and Geriatrics at Wake Forest School of Medicine. Heart failure with preserved ejection fraction is now the most common form of heart failure in America. It's particularly common in older persons and women. It's associated with increased mortality and frequent hospitalizations, large amount of health care expenditures. However, despite significant efforts and five large international multicenter trials that have tested different medications that were thought to be sure bets, we don't have evidence-based guidelines on how to treat these patients. We aimed to determine whether on top of exercise, which we and others had previously shown would improve exercise intolerance in patients with HFPEF, diet would provide additional benefit. We designed a study to test diet alone, exercise alone, exercise plus diet, and control. We enrolled 100 participants from our community who had HFPEF. Uh, as expected, 81% were women. We made a minimum BMI of 30 in order to ensure safety. We did formal testing of exercise tolerance with peak VO2 before and after the intervention. We also examined muscle composition, body composition, inflammation, and cardiac and vascular function, both before and after the intervention. The intervention was conducted over five months. The exercise was standard aerobic exercise training. The diet consisted of prepared meals by our metabolic kitchen supervised by a registered dietitian. It aimed to achieve a daily caloric deficit of 350 calories. We found that exercise alone resulted in about 6.5 pounds weight loss. Diet produced twice as much weight loss, 15 pounds, but both of them together produced 22 pound weight loss on average. Our findings regarding exercise capacity, peak VO2, tracked weight loss with a 1.2 ml per kilogram per minute improvement in peak VO2 in exercise and a 1.3 unit improvement in patients with diet. But when you put both together, diet and exercise combined produced a 2.5 unit improvement in peak VO2. To put this in perspective, a clinically meaningful improvement in peak VO2 is 1.0 units ml per kilogram per minute. And 2.5 units improvement is more than is seen with virtually any medicine tested for patients with heart failure. So a large improvement that's clinically meaningful. Diet to achieve weight loss could be an important new strategy to help patients with HFPEF, particularly those afflicted with severe exercise intolerance which impairs quality of life. There should be several next steps in this research. Probably most importantly is developing strategies to maintain long term the improvements that the patients have achieved. Another direction is that we observed that although most of the weight loss was fat tissue, about a third of it was muscle tissue. That's important because patients with heart failure have less than normal amounts of muscle tissue that they've lost as part of the heart failure syndrome and also as part of growing old. So that could have adverse long-term consequences. The National Institute of Aging has funded our current study which evaluates whether resistance or strength training added to this regimen of aerobic exercise training and diet can help improve retention of skeletal muscle and strength and overall function when patients are losing weight. It had been thought that exercise uh, could be risky for older patients with heart failure. Our studies are suggesting that it might be relatively safe. 
So a new direction would be how can we make this more widely available and inexpensive?